Today's show is all about a no drama applique project. Stay tuned to learn more about our new dye to try. Welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Cam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks for joining us today. We have a special guest in our uh, studio today. Actually, he hears her all the time. He's just on camera today. The Big City Brock is here. How are you? What's up? <laughs> Thank you. He's excited to be here. How are you? Uh, uh, good, yeah, uh, not expecting to be uh, in this seat today, yes. so that's why you're getting Nick's this, Brock. It's okay, today. but it's uh, okay. you know, it's a good Brock. But we today. managed to match, so it's all good. <sighs> Luck of the draw. <sighs> it's a good thing. All right, where is everyone watching from today? Um, we have Ruth from oh, Selkirk, New York. Do you know where that is, Brock? <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Um, Cheryl's from Omaha. Thanks for watching. I know from where that Omaha. is. Yeah, we know. We've been there. And someone is traveling down the West Coast while they're watching. Uh, Barbara. So she's, I, she must be on her phone watching us. We're Hope not you're not driving. driving. On your phone. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's showcase some of our new projects from our intro video. First up, okay, kudos to Don D. This is how she is storing her dyes. Isn't this impressive? It's, yeah. I mean, that's better than how we store them in the Dream Studio. <laughs> this is so cool. And she did them right, right? She st stored all those dyes on their side. Yeah, you don't want them on top of each other. No. It wanna be, they want to be neighbors, not uh, stacks. Yeah, like Princess and the Pea. Yeah, and look at all those beautiful sizes of cubes. Good job, Don. Thanks for sharing that. Next, we have Freddie B., so we think these are so fun. Um, Freddie used our eye mask dye to create <coughs> some whimsical eyes. Which one is your favorite, Brock? Uh, well, the, the pink one with the eyes closed seems the most fitting, uh, given that they're eye masks. The winking one makes me feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I'm crazy about the wink. Yeah, there you go. I like the do not disturb, because I feel that is also fitting for an eye mask. All right, last up we have Jody G. And Jody, listen, the guys in the Dream Studio today are super excited about this um, quilt. So first of all, I think Jody used squares to make the background. And then we think that the center is a panel, but Brock, what is in the middle of that panel? It appears to be Gen 1 Pokemon. There you go. Catch them all. Got to catch them all. Got to catch them all. Pokemon. When, when you could do it on your phone, did you catch Pokemon? I had Pokemon Go for a little while, and then I just, I, I, I go for walks anyway, so I didn't need to have my phone out. I'd oh, rather be listening there you to go. music. Um, here at AccuQuilt, we actually were a site for Pokemon Go. Oh. I know. Pretty exciting. All right, good job, Jody. We'll talk about Pokemon all day long. Today's show is not about Pokemon. It is about the new Golama die. And we are gonna make this super fun table runner. I have all of my stuff over it here. Uh, this is by our good friend, Gina Jempasa of Gem Hill Quilts. And we're gonna go through all of the pieces on it. Look at how fun this is. Uh, Brock, do you know what block this is? Uh, that's, that's the weather vane. It is the weather vane. And do you know what block the llama sits on? Uh, it's the it, it, snowball. There, six inch finish, good job. All right, so here's my photo of the day. Question marks, hmm. So the question of the day is, since today we're launching or talking about the new llama dye, what animal would you like to see as our next applique dye? And shall we make it a little broader and just say what would they would like to see as our next applique, or should we stick with the animals? I think we should stick with the animals. Okay, let's stick with the animals. Even throw in some Pokemon if you want to see a Pokemon dye. <laughs> yes, Jigglypuff. I mean, it puffs out, sun's out. Uh, what would you like to see as an animal? Uh, I want a squid, and I, and I want it to be like our record longest dye that we have. Like on a 10 by 24? Longer, so like have longer. the body this big and then yes. tentacles that skinny, go. Skinny and just long. Okay, 
All right. Let's make it happen. Uh, Why not? Producer Joe wants a liger. Of course. Of course. And a non-mythical creature. Yes. And uh, just Justin, he wants a squirrel. Is that right? All right. So in the comments section, tell us. We're excited about it. All right, so check out the AccuQuote website for some great deals and discounts, including a deal on the new Guide to Try. Today, I'm going to give away one of our Go Llama dies, and be sure and register for future events on the AccuQuote event page for your chance to win. By registering, you receive event emails. That way, you'll never miss an exciting tutorial, and Big City Brock will announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of our show. Um, Brock, have you ever seen a llama in real life? I don't think so. I have seen real llamas. I think I've seen an alpaca. I don't think it's. Oh it's yeah, a they're llama. different. They're different. <laughs> alpaca and llama that. owners would tell you that they are very different. started with the alpacas. They yeah. Will tell you. Yeah, I have. I've seen real llamas. Okay. Okay. So today the project we're going to use is called the Go Run a Llama Table Runner. It is a fun easy weekend project um, by our good friend Gina Jempasaw. Download the free pattern at AccuQuilt.com. So here's the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need the Go Weather, or the Go Llama die, the Go Weather Vane die, the Snowball 6-inch finish die, and the Mix and Match 4-inch cube, two strip dies, 6.5-inch strip and 1.5-inch strip, and I'm going to show you some magic with those. And then you're going to need the four mats for each size of die that you're going to use and the fabric requirements are from the pattern. And I like to think that this is like a really great blank template table runner. Because you could add llamas to it, you could put flamingos on it, you could put penguins on it. Um, so I love the fact that we're using the snowball die, which finishes to six inches. We're gonna show you a trick because the weather vane finishes to how big, Brock? Nine inches? Almost. Eight inches. There we go. Eight inches. So we're going to show you a trick. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's start by cutting some llamas. All right. Here's a look at the die. All right. So you're going to need a total of five llamas. Three are facing one direction, two are facing the other. And I have already pre fused my fabric. Okay. And Remember, you have to count that fabric as a half a layer of fabric when you're cutting with it. So normally we can cut six layers of cotton. Uh, but today, since they're pre-fused, we can only cut four. Yesterday, when we launched this die, we had a great show. And we learned all sorts of different uh, fabrics and materials you can cut using our dies. Brock, did you have a favorite fabric that we cut with yesterday? Uh, the flannel. The flannel was fun. That was, that was new. I hadn't seen much of that. Uh huh. And then we had that really like wool and whatever the llama red pajama guy was wearing. Pajamas. Yeah. Pajamas, red ones. <laughs> All right. So I prefused my fabric. Now, notice quilters. I have one piece facing up and one piece facing down. And that way I'm going to get llamas in different directions. All right, and then here's the little saddle for the llama or the blanket. And I'm just gonna fold my fabric in half, okay? Now this is on a five by 10 die board. So it's gonna fit through all of our Go cutters, including that Go Me. Um, today I'm gonna use my Go Big um, because I can. All right, Brock, so while I'm cutting llamas, tell us what other animals would people like to see as designs? So we are getting just bombarded with different animals that people want, and it's, it's fantastic. Uh, a lot of different dog variations I'm seeing early. Uh, so oh, Lisa yes. wants a Yorkie, uh, and I think a different Lisa wants Corgis. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Nancy A says sharks, which, yes. Yes, I'm down for sharks. Let's get, let's get all the aquatic animals yes. in there. Uh, Jen from Iowa wants a sloth. I'm seeing a lot of sloths. A lot of sloths. Uh, let's see, uh, Anna Lee wants a tiger. Oh, there you go. Not a liger, sorry, Joe. Just a regular tiger. Yep. Uh, poodles, I'm seeing. Horses, koala bears. Oh, I'd love a koala. We do have a horse. We do have a horse. I mean, he's part of the Western medley, but he is a horse. Let's see, Kathy. Right? Kathy wants a fox. Lorraine wants a wolf. Uh, Anne's asking if we can do a dragon. 
Oh, I mean, I would love a dragon. Dragons would be cool. A dragon would be cool. A lot of different kinds of dragons. I was going to say, I would like guy. a couple of different kinds of. Um, Justin, can you come do this for me? Um, I would love a, a bunch of different dragons on a big 10 by 24, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's okay. See, look at this. Yay, Justin, thank you. All right. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, so keep telling us which ones that we like. I do like the shark. That's a good one. Okay, now notice, quilters, I have some extra fabric that is already prefused. Rock, am I going to throw this away? No. No. I'm going to save it for other projects, okay? Because once you fuse it, you don't have to worry about lengthwise grain. All right? So now for our block... Um, we're going to need, since the snowball block finishes to six inches, we're going to need to make it equal to eight inches. So the thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut a little border. So if you look right here, this, Gina was brilliant in doing this. So here's this little border, this little sashing with cornerstones. Okay, right here. So these are one and a half inch cut strips and they finish to one inches, and then the llama block will finish to eight inches, which is the same as the weather vane. So I'm gonna show you this super cool trick, because I feel like cutting strips is really hard, and the chances of you messing it up are pretty good, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put that hot iron there. I like our llamas. They turned out cute, okay. All right, so I have, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it. This is the six and a half inch strip die. Brock, do you know off the top of your little quilting head how many um, strip dies we have? Do you know? We have, uh, hold on, I know this. You do know this. But I'm not gonna say it. 18. That's right. That's what 18, I was and of. if Justin were here, he'd say 18 and a half. Right? Okay. Of course. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I just have some fabric that I cut here from our green because those are going to be our little cornerstones because I'm going to show you how to cut squares as well. And then um, here's the white that we're going to need for the strips. So six and a half inches, I just rough cut seven inches. Okay. And I'm going to take my big mat and I'm going to run it through. Now remember, all of our strip dies will fit through the go and the go big, and we have two sizes of strips that will fit in the go me. All right, here we go. All right, Brock, tell us some more animals. I'm super excited about this. Denise Heltz would like a panda. Oh, a panda would be fun. So wait, 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 could we do like a panda and a sloth on the same die board? I mean, let's think about grouping our animals, I mean, right? do they get along? When they get along. I feel like the sloth doesn't care where he goes. Um, but that's a good question. Okay. So I ha had an interesting kind of follow-up on that because uh, Sarah Bartell uh, threw in Squirtle as the Pokemon she wants to see. But could we not get the three evolutions of certain Pokemon onto one die board? Listen. You could get Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise on the same you could, die board. You could. Now listen, we can't do any trademarked things, but we have a, um, a sister company called Custom Shape Pros, and they could make a custom die for you. It can't be one that's trademarked, but th you could do something, right, Brock? You could design something. I think you should design your own Pokemon. Oh, I, I don't know if I could go that far. <laughs> okay. All right. There's like seven generations of Pokemon now. There's like 3,000 of them. Do you have a favorite Pokemon? Uh, growing up, I was always a big fan of Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. Okay. Uh, the boxing and kicking yeah, yeah. Pokemon. I don't know why. I just thought, that, I just thought they okay. were cool. Fighting Pokemon. There you go. Okay. I know all about Pokemon on my outside. Two boys. Okay. So I've cut my six and a half inch strips. And now look, here's the one and a half inch strip die. Okay, so I'm gonna lay my perfectly cut six and a half inch strips and I'm gonna lay them parallel to this black line right here. And now I can, it's gonna subcut them into perfect one and a half by six and a half inch 
strips. And the reason I did it on my die is because I'm gonna tell you cutting one and a half inch strips is hard with a rotary cutter and a ruler. I feel like it always um, moves, the ruler. All right. We're just, we're just being so productive here on a, on a Wednesday. All right, so All right, besides we're, Pokemon, what else are people wanting? We're, we're, we're really diving deep here now. Uh, it's okay. getting a little crazy. So uh, Vicki wants a skunk. She wants a what? She wants a skunk. A skunk, why? I don't know if we can like smell infuse some of our dye boards, but I feel like you could do that with a skunk pretty easily. And why would you want a skunk, like Pepe Le Pew? I, I, maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe that maybe is it's why. A, maybe it's a love skunk. Okay. Uh, we've got donkeys, we've got giraffes, we've got more sloths, more wait, dragons. Wait, wait, we have dolphins. a giraffe on the, the zoo die. We do. Uh, Lisa okay. wants a cow, which we have on the farm animals medley die. There you go. Okay, so look, everybody, I've cut perfect one and a half by six and a half inch strips, which I'm going to use on the border of my snowball. And now I'm going to show you the super cool trick on how to cut one and a half inch squares. Now you could use uh, shape number two from your four inch cube to do this. But while you have your strip die out, you could do this. So I'm going to take my little stack here and I'm going to turn them right here at 90 degrees again. Now this is kind of a cool trick because I don't have to use my whole big mat. I can just use my smaller mat, which I have right here, okay? So whenever I am cutting squares, this is how I do it. Whenever I'm cutting rectangles, it's the same concept. The trick is you need to cut the widest strip first. So if I was doing rectangles that were four by six, I would cut six inch strips, turn them 90 degrees on the four inch strip die, and cut them. Okay, so look, now I have all my cornerstones that I need for my block. Ta-da. Okay, so that was kind of the little prep work we needed to do so that now we can kind of get into sewing. All right, so let's talk about the snowball die. Because I don't know, Brock, have you ever seen me cut with the snowball die before? I can't say that, it, uh, that I, I remember I don't doing think it. So. I don't think I've cut with it before. It's a pretty rarely used die for us. It, it is, so let's talk about it. Um, the great thing about the snowball die is that we've cut off those half square triangles from the corners and then we have them separate here. So the snowball is typically two different colors and today we're gonna use the sage color for the background of our llamas. And then I'm just gonna cut white corners. Now. I measure from here to here at a quarter of an inch on either side, just rough cut my little piece. You wanna use a 10 by 10 mat, okay? Don't use a big 10 by 24, otherwise as it goes through the cutter, it's going to slide, okay? Okay, it is super staticky in here in the Dream Studio today. All right, here we go. Give it some love, slide, don't lift. Whoop, there we go. And now we have the corners. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do this little block and sew these corners here on the side. And Brock, while I sew, can you tell us other animal dyes that people are wanting? I'm loving this, this is yeah. so fun. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting even crazier. Peggy wants a gorilla. <gasps> I would love a gorilla. Gorilla would be good. Cheryl, I love a gorilla. Cheryl wants a, a hedgehog. Now, no confirmation or if that's Sonic the Hedgehog or just a regular hedgehog. Uh, but, you know, we could maybe do both. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Patricia would like an elephant. We have an elephant. We do have an elephant. We have a big mama elephant and a little baby elephant. Uh, Marilyn wants a frog. Uh, we have a frog. We do have a frog. Okay. Good that we have so many of these animals already. It's like we I know, so folks, zoo. just check out on our website at acucold.com if you think, oh, I want a frog. Today we have one. Uh, we have sheep. Sheep. Uh, Jean uh, would like a lab. I'm guessing that's a, a, a Labrador. And not like a science lab <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool, kind of fun though. <laughs> not sure how you could pull it off, but it'd be cool to see. Yeah, there you go. 
Uh, see, we got an uh, B, uh, B okay, section. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Awesome. Hold on here. I got to make sure I'm sewing them to the right side. Aha, I've successfully distracted you. You have. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, B section, a possum. Okay, I am not a fan of real life possums. Are okay. you? Because the only time I see possums is at night in the trash. You know, they're just kind of always creeping around at night. I'm not a fan. I mean, I would say that kind of sounds like me because I'm like a night person <laughs> kind of. but just creeping around at night. It could well, happen. Night it walks, could happen. Yeah, okay. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, and Pamela's saying that she wants uh, an alpaca to go with the llama. Now, are they friends? Do they live in the same place? Somebody Google that. I think they, they don't can. Live in the I same don't think place. they're traditionally uh, like group neighbors. Together. Yeah, I don't think they're neighbors. They're not going to each other's houses on the weekend. <laughs> they're not having lunch over there. Okay. Speaking of lunch, what are you having for lunch today? Do you know? It's, uh, a bag of trail mix and uh, chips Reese, uh, and, a, and a Reese's heart. Excellent. All right. <laughs> so now I have sewn my snowball. Look at this. And now I'm going to press to the half square triangles. I made sure I sewed them on the right side here, Brock, so we're good. Okay. So here we go. All right, tell us what other animals, oh, and hey, if you have questions, we, we answer those as well. All right, I'm liking so far a gorilla and a sloth and a shark. Those are my new favorites. Ooh, all right, so do you have questions? Okay. Uh, Pat would like to know, uh, she has trouble with the extra fabric hanging off the side of the strip die. Uh, she says, I tuck it under the die. I've tried folding it on top, but it keeps pulling. Yeah, never do that. Just kind of scrunch it up next to the die or just subcut it. So like if I'm cutting um, six and a half inch strips, I just rough cut seven inches. Then you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, don't ever put it on the top or the bottom because it's going to tug and then you're going to be cranky. Okay. All right. Look at this. So now we can add our borders and we're going to add these first, okay, on the sides. And then while I'm sewing those, because I can chain stitch for days, I am going to add these little cornerstones that we cut a whole bunch of. Okay. Look at how fast and easy the snowball ball block is. Again, this is a really great block to use just as like a template for lots of different applications. You could do flowers, you could do bunnies. Okay. No, I noticed nobody said like bunnies or anything. Okay. All right. What else, Brock, are they telling us? Uh, we had one question from uh, Jana who wanted to know why you were pressing out versus pressing towards the dark. Um, I tend to, when I sew half square triangles to another shape, I have a tendency to press towards the half square triangle so that it just lays a little flatter. I, I find that it's just a Pam Heller preference, I guess. Mm -hmm. I can have those, right? So it's not, it's not I can, necessary for the block? It's not. Okay. Yeah, you could press your seams open if you wanted to. The Gibney, she presses all of her seams open. Okay, so look how I'm just chain piecing. Just right, so happy to be doing that. Peggy, and we've gotten a few of these, but I'm gonna read, uh, Peggy has said a turtle would be a good one to have. Okay, so a turtle would be a good one. Think about like accoutrements, right? Cause you could build it. You'd have the turtle body and the turtle shell cause you want it different colors, right? And then eventually when we get like a person die, you could put the turtle shell on a person and they become a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> this is true. But only if there was a mask as part of the you know, die. I, I had to bring, I had to say it. I had to bring it up. If you say he a did. turtle, it's going to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja He did. No, it's all good. This is the uh, Lynn Dean, uh, and I've seen this one a couple times through here. Uh, what's a kangaroo? Oh, a kangaroo and a baby Joey. That would be fun. Mermaids, we've got some mermaids as well. Mermaids would be fun. I would love to see like mermaids and have them have like crowns and be like mer people, right? You could have boys and girls. You could, you could. With what are those tridents? Yeah. I'm but I mean, only the, only, the, only like the king is supposed to have the trident. Maybe like if, we, if we got a mermaid die, Jason Momoa would come. 
Let's work on that. <laughs> he can be here for the launch. All right. What else before I start pressing here? Uh, let's see. Uh, Sherry would like an elk die for an animal. Uh, maybe uh, we've got a lot of different kinds of fish we have as moose. well. We have moose. What, what is the plural of moose? 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 Niece? Mouse? Moose is my, we've had this conversation. Um, we have a moose on the, um, we have a moose on a die. Okay. All right, so now I press towards the white. So here on my sides, Northwoods Medley. And it has a bear and a moose and a tree. Now we're gonna press towards the white on our strips. Okay, look at this. So much fun sewing we're having today. Brock, have you chosen a pattern to like make and sew? Cause we know people who could help you like make a quilt. Do you? Is there anyone around here that could do that? Like your mama? Like my mama. <laughs> Brock's mama is a quilter. She is. She's made two quilts for me, including the one that's on my bed right now. Has she? Did she use a dye? Please say yes. Uh, no, this was way back before. Uh, it was a t-shirt quilt, so. Just ah, like, there you go. Okay, so look at this. All right, so now I pressed towards the white on both occasions, so now my seams are gonna nest. All right. All right, what else, Brock, while I'm sewing? I'm, I'm liking all these animals. Is a mermaid really an animal? Let's kind of think about that. Okay, what else? It's half an animal, I guess. I would like to see um, like a narwhal. Oh, no, <laughs> you want to see a narwhal die? That's, that's insane. I would love a narwhal die. Uh, I bet Custom Shape Pros could make me one. I bet they could. So we, we got a comment here from Donna McCaffrey okay. who asked about a bulldog die or some other common sports characters. Oh, go uh, bulldogs, Burke. So that's actually a pretty good idea because you could get like some of the really common team mascot yes. animals like eagles and falcons cardinals. and tigers and cardinals and oh my and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a and great I've, idea. And I find it interesting that the, the commenter that her name is Donna McCaffrey, and I wonder if there's any relation to the Ed McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey family of McCaffrey, family. McCaffrey sports freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Would you tell us if you're a sports freak and part of the McCaffrey sports freaks? We'd love to know. Okay, I love that. All right, what else? But no, okay, so Ooh. listen again, Custom Shape Pros, they could make you a bulldog. They could. They could make you a mascot, you bet. Because okay. I feel like high school mascots especially change. So when Taylor and Mason were here at Burke, um, they were both artists and they drew like for the soccer team, like designed t-shirts that had a different Burke Bulldog than you know what was normal, so yeah. Okay, look, now we've made my block. Now here's my pro tip, <laughs> okay? You need a total of these five llama blocks and five weather vane blocks. Listen, make all the same blocks at one time so you can just chain piece for days, okay? All right, so I'm gonna press um, away here so my little seams lay flat. Okay, Brock, what else is happening? Uh, we've got a question from Karen Hunt here who Hi, Karen. Uh, wants to know how many layers of craft foam can go through the cutter for an applique die? Um, how many, Brock? I think we only, we typically only cut one layer of craft foam we at a time. typically only cut one layer of craft foam. Yep, that is the correct answer. Okay, so now my little block is sewn for my llama. I like this one a lot. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna add my llama. And I like how he's a little bit off, like his feet are centered and he comes a little bit off the thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel back my fusible. Now listen, we have lots of different kinds of fusible on our website, lots of varieties of it. Um, our newest one is this one, I'll just show it here. This is Hotfix, and it comes in these great six by six sheets, which is perfect for most of our applique dies at AccuQuilt, okay? So I'm gonna put my little llama, shall we name him? 
What would you name him, Brock? Arthur. Arthur. Okay. All right, here we go. So I'm just going to press it. I'm not going to iron it because that'll make a mess. Just gonna... another, another comment here from Joanne who uh, saying she's having some problems chain piecing. The stitches at the beginning and the end of the sewn together pieces sometimes open up and have to be re-sewn. Can you help her out? Oh, yeah. So if you wanted to, you could, while you're chain piecing, just back stitch a couple of stitches and that will help it keep from raveling. I find that like the chain piecing blocks, these pieces here that are gonna go in the middle, you know, there's gonna be another seam here that's gonna stop it from raveling, okay? All right, so look at our llama block. Now, we have a variety of ways to finish our llama. You can do raw edge quilting, you can do a decorative stitch from your domestic machine. We have at AccuQuilt free embroidery download files. Um, we have some for purchase that are more detailed and they are all super fun. So think about your llama, how do you wanna do it? Gina Jempasad did a little blanket stitch around hers and then she did some all over quilting, okay? All right, so here's our llama block. His name is Arthur, he'll be famous now. All right, so Brock, um, tell us why should our viewers use an AccuQuilt fabric cutter to make their llamas? Oh, speed and precision. Speed and precision is correct. Yes. And since it's a six inch, it's since the llama's on a six inch sideboard, you can run two through your Go Big electric fabric cutter and get twice as many llamas in twice as much time. I've never been more proud. That is exactly right. Yeah, so you could do that. Or you could run your llamas through and you could use the weather vane, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, All you right. could have like this whole table runner cut out in like no time. Yeah, I, I just think it's great. Okay, so I have downloaded, here I'll show you, downloaded the pattern from AccuQuilt.com and these are in the instructions on how to sew the weather vane. And this makes an eight inch block and since we added those borders to our llama block, it also is an eight inch block, okay? Again, you can totally change up the colorway if you wanted to. Um, let's talk about our shapes, okay? So first of all, oh, what shape is this? Uh, that's the house shape. This is the house shape. Does it have a real name? Everybody's like, it's a house. Okay, so A is, it's screen printed for easy uh, piecing to keep track of your pieces. B is this house shape. Uh, C are the sides that we're gonna create here for our block. And D are the half square triangles. All of these shapes have quarter inch seam allowance built in, okay? And I'm gonna use solids to make my pieces, okay? So make sure that, depending on your color scheme, that you make a test block, because that's how we always do that. All right, so I'm going to put my blue over our house piece. There has to be a better word for that. It's not really a pentagon. I think it's a house piece. Okay, we need two colors of pink and we need a whole bunch of white. All right, now this is on a six by 24 die board. It also is gonna fit through all of our go cutters, including the go me. And uh, we're gonna use our go big today. All right, Brock, tell us more animals as we're cutting. Look, right, I've, like I've got one uh, like amendment to a question I asked earlier. Uh, so Karen had asked about the number of layers of craft foam you could cut. Uh, specifically what she's wanting to know is how thick of craft foam could you cut through on the Oh, hey, that's a great question. Hold please, I might know. Before I do the big reveal there. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I will find out, and if you follow me on Facebook on AccuQuilt Educator Pam Heller, um, this afternoon I'll post a picture of the craft foam and it will tell the thickness on it. Uh, but this is just standard craft foam, it's pretty thick, okay? It's not, it's great. Um, I'll post it, okay? All right, here we go, we're gonna slide, don't lift. Look at how beautiful these pieces are. Look how fast we cut all the pieces. And 
Okay, now listen, every now and then if you find one thread, don't pull it because then your whole piece will just come apart there. Okay, now we're going to start by laying out our block and I have already sewn some, okay? So, and this is the weather vane block. Some of you are already stressing, oh man, there's Y seams. There are no Y seams, <laughs> okay? None Y seams. None of them ever, okay? Right here we have half square triangles, okay? Oh, which means I probably should have cut some. I'll cut some, okay? Here I was paying attention to what I was doing. Oh, I already have some cut, I'm good, okay. Now, here's the thing I want to show you because you really, really want to follow your pattern because um, these are directional shapes, okay? So, it, see, they go like this, all right? So, you want to make sure that your shapes are going in the correct direction. Okay, so this block is the same block over and over, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure, see, that my short end is here, and then one of my little half square triangles is here, and then one of my blue half square triangles, I'm gonna sew this direction. Okay, look at that. You want to make sure that when you're sewing these pieces together, that you're sewing them together correctly, okay? And then I'll show you how to do the other side. We're going to lay it out because, man, I tell you, I, I really had to make sure I was, I could not watch TV while I was doing this, Brock. I had to really pay attention. Oh man. I know. I could That's listen to TV. That's when you know you got to get serious. I know. I can listen to TV, but okay. All right, so here's my, oh, see? Yeah, this is right. Is this right? Hold on. Yes, this is correct. All right, so now I'm going to, I could totally chain piece these as well. So I'm going to start by sewing the white half square triangle. And the way you're going to know that you did it right is that it's going to fit right here. Okay, so I'm going to sew my half square triangles together. All right, Brock, tell us what animals people are wanting us to have. All right, getting a lot more sea turtles after mentioning it earlier. I, I would love a sea turtle, and I would like to have like, oh, dang. Hold, please. Uh -oh. oh, man, what uh -oh. is happening? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. We'll fix it. We can fix it. Um, I think it would be fun because, you know, we could piece it out, the sea turtle. Yeah. So that, you know, you could have its shell and it could, each of the pieces could be different. And yeah. I think that would be a great idea. Uh, sea turtles are great. More uh, aquatic based ones. We've got a stingray. Uh, Kathy would like to see a stingray. Okay. Uh, we've got, I've seen some crocodiles or alligators. They're different. They are different. It's the spines down the back. It's how you tell. That's how you Well, I personally don't ever want to get close enough to know, but sure. No. Well. Okay. But you lived in Florida. Did you see alligators? Oh. Did you go down Alligator Alley? Yeah, they're everywhere. They're, they are everywhere. Uh, okay, so I've been... Well, please, I've, this is what happens when we have live TV. I've, I've been holding this comment back. Uh, for a minute, because I thought it warranted uh, good discussion time. Okay, well, uh, while I do Suzanne, this... Is... and I, I think I've seen it a couple other times, calling for a Bigfoot die. Oh, okay. What do you think about that? I don't think we could do that. Why? He's not a trademark guy. I mean, he's just a wild guy living yeah. in the Pacific Northwest. Well, we don't know what he looks like. <laughs> All we know is, like, blurry pictures through the woods that we've Have had to peek through. Have you not seen Harry and the Hendersons? That's... Yes, I've seen Harry and Anderson's. I'm insulted that you asked me that. They know. And the other part is, how do you know that that's an accurate depiction of what a Bigfoot is? And then you get into this whole debate of like, okay, Bigfoot versus Yeti versus Sasquatch. It's like, where's the, where's the line that we draw? Well, there? and then what do you do about 
the abominable snowman. Yeah, that's another one. Right, because I mean, he's different. Plus, when you're designing it, like how big do you make the feet? So, <laughs> uh, so for Christmas, um, I took the Elizabeth Hartman legendary. Look at me, uh, legendary pattern. And um, I made Yetis out of it with mountains, and it was so fun, but a ton of work. I would have much rather have had a die. What do you think? Should we have one or no? I, I mean, say, I say. How do we know what a unicorn looks like? Well, that's pretty standard, I feel like. Wool. Wool? Well. You're not cutting wool, you're cutting cotton. I am cutting cotton. Well. I just, I just wonder, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. For, for that matter, how do we know what mermaids actually look like? Right? I mean. Well, I've seen Aquaman. I pretty much know what a mermaid looks like. So I'm pretty happy with that version of a mermaid. Um, but no, think about that. So mythological characters, what other ones? Like dragons. Dragons, griffins. Yeah, I totally think we should have those. I think we should have a Yeti. And I think he should be pieced so that you know you can create him nice and big because I feel like he is you know big in life what do you think I don't know I feel like it's a slippery slope when you go down that road it is a slippery slope and we've been on so many already today all right so now look now I'm going to add my blue pieces now that I've sewn my fabric I had to re. I, I want you to know, Brock, that at home, I hardly ever have. Um, I ever ha hardly ever have to, like, rethread my machine. I feel like here at work, I do it every week, right? Maybe, maybe because this machine is only used once a week, so it, it doesn't get the the regular kind of love. Oh, that maybe one at home the regular gets. love. Regular yeah. love and maintenance. All right. So look, now I'm adding these half square triangles. And it's going to be beautiful. All right, so I've got a comment here uh, from Jacqueline Taylor, who said uh, that she had a, a Bigfoot made by Custom Shape Rose. <gasps> okay, will you share it? Yeah, we want to see that. We want to see it. We want to see what they think a Bigfoot looks like. We do. Like. Come on, you have it somewhere. Just show it to us. Just throw it up in the comment section, and Brock will look at it and go, oh, yeah, or no. Okay, now, oh, here, here's my tip. Well, I know we're still sewing while we talk about Bigfoot. Um, I'm going to sew one of these towards the white half square triangle and one of these towards the blue half square triangle. That way, when I put my seams together, they're going to nest. Okay, so these outer seams I have pressed open. And this one I'm going to sew or press towards the blue triangle. And this one I'm going to press towards the white and it's just magic. Ooh, it helps if my iron is on. I turned it off so I didn't burn my little finger. All right, so besides mythical creatures, what other did they want to have? Uh, Nancy's calling for a raccoon die. A raccoon? That'd be an interesting one. Ricky raccoon, okay. Uh, Charlotte was with you earlier uh, when you said that we didn't have bunnies, so she'd, she'd like to see some, some bunny we rabbits. We have bunnies. Coming. Doesn't the Easter medley have a bunny on it? This is Probably. such good trivia of how many dyes do I really know what are on them. Yeah, Easter Medley has a bunny. Little bunny foo-foo and a basket. Hopping through the forest. Okay. Picking up some field mice. Bopping them on. <laughs> Bopping them on the head. All right, so look. Look at how perfect that is. None wise seems. Absolutely none. Not a one. Not a one. All right, so now I'm going to press it open, and we're going to finish sewing this block together. All right, so Teresa brings up an interesting idea. Uh, she thinks it'd be cool to have a, a set of dies for the zodiac signs. So like a bull for Taurus and a scorpion. Oh, sure. Oh, that would be kind of cool. That would be very interesting. And again, how would you design them, right? There are so many versions of zodiacs. That is true. Right? That is true. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe I pick your pick the most common, the most widely well-known one. Oh, there you go. Okay, let's do our last block because we're we're hustling through these. So here's our house. <laughs> now we're going to make them a square. 
So we're gonna add the one side at a time. So when you're chain piecing these, do one side at a time. Uh, pretend like they're flying geese, okay? Ah, Brock, I sewed two of them together. Oh, what'd you do that for? Well, because I was thinking about dragons <laughs> and zodiacs and yetis. All right, hold on. There we go. See, I had two. All right, now I'm going to re-sew them. All right, what else people want in the animal wise? Oh, let's see here. Ruth, uh, Ruth thinks it'd be cool to have a panther. Oh, a panther would be panther cool. Would be cool. Okay, I'm going to press this towards the triangle, just like you do with flying geese. I find it lays flatter than a panther. Okay. And what else? I feel like we must have hundreds of these. Yeah, we're... It's gonna be fun. I go to, you know, at the end of every show, I kind of go through the comments and watch the show again. It'll be fun to look through all of these comments. Uh, there's definitely a, a, a lot to go through, that's for sure. Uh, Janice, uh, Janice thinks it would be a good idea to have like a bucking bronco. So I know we have a horse, but like one that's like... Oh, that's yeah. Like doing like the, the buck kind, yeah. of, kind of motion. That'd that would be, be kind of fun. That would be a good one. Uh, Susan would like a manatee. Oh, okay. That's part of our sharks and yeah, sea more, more life. Aquatic life. Yeah, our little sea life. Oh, okay. So I think I think Margaret here is just trying to get on your good side. Uh, <laughs> she's just she's calling for more uh, Halloween themed ones. So oh. skulls and sure. bones and vampires and brooms yes. and ghosts and things. So yes. Uh, and yes. Linda would like to know about a zebra baby. Now, we, we have the horse die, which right. is kind of the same. So here's, I've thought about this. Not my first time. I have thought about taking, because our zebra is white with black stripes, right? They're white horses with black stripes, right? Please say yes sure. or no. They are. Okay. And <laughs> hold on here. Okay, I'm going to sew and then I'm going to talk about it. Okay, so now I'm gonna add these sides. And they're gonna to come together perfectly because I've pressed my seam open on the little um, square that has the pink and blue on it. Okay, so I've thought about a zebra because you could cut out a white horse and then you could just take random pieces of pre-fused black fabric and lay it on the horse die, and then you could create stripes. I've thought about this, obviously. See what I'm saying? I, I see what you're saying. I'm just curious, is it not easier to get zebra striped fabric and cut it out on the horse and there you have a zebra? <laughs> Never I mean, in my quilting head I, I don't I know about that. But yes, Brock, that is the best answer. <laughs> Oh, zebras for the win. I, have, I haven't been quilting for, you know, 30 <laughs> years, but I feel like that's got to be a pretty easy way to go about that, right? Oh, my gosh. Never have I thought of that. All right. So that's the correct answer is you would get zebra fabric. Somebody sent me cow fabric. I think it was um, Terry Vandenbosch sent me some cow fabric when we released the farm animals medley. That is hilarious. All of that time I've wasted trying to make zebras and Brock in 15 seconds had the right answer. Okay. Ooh, Lynette would like to see a tractor to go along with all the farm animal stuff. Oh, yeah. Tractor would be neat. That would be fun. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> what a great day we've had. Okay, so now you can see how these are gonna line up. Look at how perfect those are. So I'm gonna press so that they just lay flat. And, oh, here, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna press in opposite directions so they lay together. So I'm gonna lay this one towards the middle. Um, all right, we have just a few more minutes, Brock. Tell us what people are wanting. Quilty minds wanna know. We got, we got some dolphins. Dolphins. See, see a camel. Uh, see, not a dragon, but a dragonfly. We have a dragonfly. We do have. Mm-hmm. 
We do have uh, the dragonfly. Do you know what diet's on? It's called go critters. Critters, that's right. Oh, yeah. Critters. Uh, Constance is on the, the Justin train of wanting to see a squirrel. I think that's hilarious, by the way, that y'all want a squirrel. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew my rows together. Um, I still wanna see the Yeti. I wanna see the Yeti die that our good friends at Custom Shape Pros made. Yeah, Okay. that's gonna be a good one. All right, so I'm gonna go really slow here and I'm gonna make sure that my seams align for this block. And, all right, what else, Brock, while I'm sewing? Yeah, now, now people are just really jumping on some of these animals we've already talked about. Starting to see a lot more sea turtles. <laughs> Uh, no more, no more Pokemon, which I'm a little, a little upset about. You know, no people wanting to see like, you know, Charmanders or Pikachu's or Pikachu. I know. Scythers, maybe a Dragonair, a Gyarados. <laughs> he could sit here all day and talk about Pokemon. Machamp. There you go. Electra Dude, which is just a circle. Did you have a favorite Pokemon growing up? Yeah, I told you. I know, but that you said as an adult, not as a child. Oh, as a child, it was still Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. Yeah, was it? Okay. All right, here we go. So you want to make sure <laughs> that you're not thinking about all the new dyes and sewing this trick. Okay, so, Pam. Yes. We have an image of the Sasquatch. How can we show it, Joe? I don't think we can show it, but I can show you after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Brock is Or I can just take my computer over there. I'm not bound to this seat or anything. Oh, this is true. This is true. Brock is going to show it to me, and then I will post it on my... He'll send it to me, and I'll... He'll take a screenshot, and I'll post it on my AccuQuilt Educator account. Because I'm... Okay, so what do you think of it before we get to see it here? I think it looks like how most people think uh, Bigfoot looks. Okay, there you go. I, I like that a lot. I feel like Custom Shape Pros is going to call me later and say, what did you guys talk about on the show today? Because people want us to make Yetis. We've gotten 50 calls for, for different variations of a Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm down for that. <laughs> All right. Now, look at how fast. Just so you know, if we all weren't just hanging out here, boy, we could just put this block together in no time. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna press, so my block is gonna lay flat and then I'm gonna give it a good press with my iron. Hey quilters, don't forget we have these um, little steam fast irons on our website. And Brock, do we ever use steam? No. Never, nope. never, none steam. None steam, none why seams. Huh. Yeah, steam makes it. That's a wordplay joke. <laughs> Thank you, Kenyon. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to be in charge. Okay, did I do it right? I did, look at that. All right, and look, because we added the sashing to our llama block, now they're the same size. Look at how fun that is. Okay, so, thank you, Justin. All right, so this is a free pattern. It's available at AccuQuilt.com. Again, a huge shout out to Gina Jempasa for designing such a cute pattern. All right, Brock, at last three animals, and then you get to announce the winner of our AQ Live. Last three animals? Last three animals. You're putting me on the spot here. Okay, so I saw, uh, let's see, we got a call for an Eevee, the Pokemon Eevee, uh, which would be great because then we could have like additional dyes to make all of its like 15 evolutionary there you go. Uh, side okay. ones. Uh, we got a Meeple, which is another Pokemon. Uh, that would be pretty cool. And, uh, and you know, I'm just gonna, what I'm thinking is like the most common one. I'm just gonna end it with the sea turtle. I think people are wanting a turtle. Sea turtle. And he should be big. Of course. He should be big and have lots of different um, pieces that you could applicate to his back. Yeah. Okay, we'll work on that. All right, will you announce the winner of our AQ Live today who won our Go Llama uh, die? I can do that, Maestro, if you would please. It is Lois L. from Escondido, California. Escondido, congratulations, Lois. All right, quilters, be sure and check the AccuQuilt website for some great deals, um, including the new llama dive with a mat. 
And don't forget this month to die to try is that gold llama dye. It is only available till the end of the month or while supplies last, get yours today. Um, you can also find it at your local signature retailer. All right, quilters, are you going to go to AQS Daytona? I will be there Wednesday through Friday hosting the lounge. Come say hi to me, it'll be so much fun. I'm also gonna be teaching a class on Friday at one o'clock. Um, this is what we're making. It is called the Tide Pool Table Topper. And the thing I love about this is we're gonna use our nine inch cube and quilters, we are going to finish it in the time that we are at Daytona. You're not gonna go home with a UFO. So you can sign up on the AQS website for my class. All right, on behalf of everyone on our team. So offsite, we have Katie and Morgan helping and Lauren. They're helping with the questions, right? And Alyssa. And Alyssa, oh, thank you, Alyssa. And then here in the Dream Studio, Greg is helping out today, and of course, Big City Brock. And Justin, today is Producer Joe's last live show, and we will miss him terribly, but we are super excited for him to go and do amazing things. Um, but we've enjoyed having him here two years. Joe, have you been here? Two, all right. So on behalf of our entire team here in the Dream Studio, thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join me and Erica on Tuesday, February 14th, as we celebrate the love of quilting. Be sure and register on the events page for the chance to win prizes. And be sure to join us next week for AccuQuilt Live as we start the AQS AccuQuilt Along. The lovely Erica will be here and we're gonna show you step-by-step -step how to cut and sew the stars in the crown quilt. Be sure and register for the chance to win prizes. It's gonna be tons of fun.